Hey everyone, it's Edith. I'm here at Ryan Miller's studio at Hercules Street and I'm chatting with Milky. I started songwriting when I was very little. I used to sit in my garden and just like bash the guitar, singing absolute nonsense. Um, but I started getting into songwriting and writing like proper songs when I started high school as I um, struggled with the start of high school as I found it really hard, bit of a change. And then from there, I went to a music school called The Artist Studio, which is my local singing school. And I just started singing there. I had great mentors, amazing teachers, and I started producing music there as well and sort of continued from there. And I've done it ever since. So my new single, Fear, is about losing a good friend that you grew up with in the sense of like going sort of through a friendship breakup. That's how I like to describe it. You know, I think it's a really natural thing to go through, a friendship breakup, but um, it doesn't mean it's not hurtful or painful. I think it's just as painful as a breakup, to be honest. You know, someone you've depended on for so long is not there, is not around as much to talk to. So I wrote this for a very personal very personal place, very emotional place, but it's a really special song to me, so I'm so excited it's out. My favourite line in Fear definitely is walking in silence. Small talk is our friend, because I just remember vividly not being able to talk to this friend like I used to. Like, we'd make small talk, but it was so different to our old chats. We used to have deep conversations. Um, but that's just a part of growing up, I feel. You know, you fall out of friendships and that's just part of life. Um, and it sucks, but it's it happened. I knew for the music video I wanted to have flashbacks in my childhood because it's sort of not only a song about a breakup with a friend but it's also about my childhood and just growing up in general. So I knew I wanted to envision myself when I was younger or somehow have my younger self in it. That's where the projections of like my younger self comes into it and sort of me watching myself grow up. That's where that's sort of the drive in movie, watching these projections, watching myself grow up. And then Bailey, um, the director, was able to, you know, really envision that and we got like pulled it all together and pulled a storyline together with it as well but I knew I just wanted to be watching myself grow up and sort of reminiscing in a sort of sense. I still to this day struggle to find I still think I struggle to find my sound um, growing up I listened to a lot of Adele so ballads were always you know my favorite things ever but then I sort of got into the indie sound when I got into high school and I started listening to artists you know like Meg Mac and all that um, but I still to this day struggle I always want to do I always feel like I want to be in lots of different genres I'm like today I want to write you know maybe not a country song but like today I want to write something bluesy something pop so I still struggle with that but I definitely feel like as I'm getting older I'm finding my sound a lot more and as I figure out what I want in a session I'm able to you know figure out what sounds I like and what sounds I don't like. It's different every time when I write a song all I know is that I write the best when I'm hurt which sucks because I have to be hurt to write a song but um I just know a lot of my songs especially this fear is written from a very personal vulnerable state um and I write the best when I am upset so yeah I song write the best when I'm upset but also I've, I've been trying to song write you know just about life and just when I'm happy but you get the most vulnerable and emotional and I feel the best lyrics come out when I've been through something personal like I can't write from something that's not personal it has to be something personal or something has to happen to me for me to be able to connect to a song and really appreciate a song. A lot of awkwardness. I'm uh, not a dancer on stage, so you will not be expecting any dance moves. Although I feel like I'm getting better at, you know, sort of swaying to the songs. I make a lot of faces when I sing. I feel like a lot of people enjoy my um, emotion to my songs. That's where I sort of am able to be myself on stage. Um, but live shows, I absolutely love performing. I absolutely love performing and connecting and for the audience to be able to hear my songs live. I feel like it's just such a special, special thing and I'm so excited for this show to come. I most definitely want to release an EP next year. I actually went away for, to Europe for a few months and I wrote a lot of lyrics, so I'm really excited to start diving into those lyrics. So yeah, an EP hopefully will be on the way next year, but also a bunch of shows as well. 
I found it really difficult. I wrote down, you know, words. I, I tend to write down words I hear from people's conversations that I like anyway. So I did that a lot while I was away. I just struggled with not having an instrument. I can't really write a song without having, you know, a guitar or a piano so I can put down chords with, a, with my lyrics. So I did actually struggle with that, but I did write, you know, some words and some phrases that I liked, but I definitely didn't write whole songs. So now when I'm home, I've been collecting those lyrics and words and putting them into songs and developing them further. I'm gonna be honest, I'm terrified of spiders, but what my mum always used to say is that they're more scared of you. So you've got to keep that in mind. And most of the spiders, like obviously we're in Australia, there's a lot of deadly spiders. That's not meant to scare anybody, but um, you know, they're not going to hurt you. You leave them alone, they'll leave you alone. Just don't wear them. Stay, steer clear of sneakers, sneaker shops. That's what I'd say. <laughs> I don't know if that's good advice, but. <laughs> I'm also not very great with heights, but I feel once you've done it, I know a few times I've been scared to go up in, you know, tall buildings. Um, but once I did it, I felt proud of myself. So you just know like, it's a good feeling once you've gotten over that fear. Play music, So what I'd say to get over that fear. Play music as loud as you can. Um, I hopefully it would drown out the thunder and lightning. Be with your cats and dogs because they don't like it either. So you could all just be together. Try and just, yeah, keep clean. Sanitise. Sanitise would be my advice for that. That's probably really a bad advice to be honest. But um, yeah, sanitise and wash your hands before and after every meal. I suppose you could hose your shoes off as well. Or try, I know some people don't like wearing their outside clothes like on their beds. That's one as well, which I do not follow at all. I'm literally, when I get home, I just dive onto my bed, but that, yeah, change your clothes if you don't want that outside germs to come into your house. I absolutely adore Georgia Smith. Um, I love her music. She's definitely been a huge influence on my songwriting and my music, um, along with Phoebe Bridges, especially her songwriting. Um, growing up, I loved Taylor Swift. I went to a few of her concerts, so I love Taylor Swift and Adele, all females. Female artists I really connect to. Although I do love Lil Kano, who's a rapper, who I've, my music is nothing in common, but I absolutely love his music. 100% would be with Loyal Kana to do sort of like um, loose end vibes he did with Georgia Smith like oh that would be a dream to work with him. Coldplay's Parachute definitely had a big impact on me growing up as me and mum used to listen to it a lot around the house so yeah that's a special album to me. I just watched Don't Worry Darling and I feel like it spooked me that movie oh my god it was really scary but I feel like that'd be a cool cool movie to create a soundtrack to. Ooh, Miley Cyrus, because that's her. I try and not, when I'm performing, I try not to think about my lyrics because I will mess them up. So I'm trying to just, you know, I'm when I get into a song, you'll, you'll notice it on my face because I show that I'm really deep and then my eyes are closed and I'm like squinting and stuff like that. But yeah, I try not to think about what lyric is coming next because then that just messes me up and I forget them. So yeah. <laughs> the first song I loved singing was actually Someone Like You by Adele as my mum was up all night learning it on the piano because she wanted to teach me it. And then I was able to pick it up in like five minutes because she's never played the piano before. But yeah, it's a special song to me when I sing it. Coldplay so I also think that's why it holds a special place in my heart and it was the most amazing concert ever like we had light up wristbands and the whole stadium like lit up yeah that was really nice I went to Taylor Swift twice and that was when I was a lot younger but she's just such a good performer and she was such an inspiration when I was younger I was like I want to like when I went to her concert I was like I want to do that I want to be on stage like that and be able to perform like that Loud by Rihanna definitely I think was the first album I bought on iTunes 
but I would definitely just listen to the albums on my mum's phone that she had already bought because I didn't want to spend my iTunes money. <laughs> a Spice Girl. All my friends always used to say I was ginger spice because of my red hair apparently, which I, I personally, it's definitely strawberry blonde. I'm just putting that out there now. It's definitely strawberry blonde, but something to do with strawberries. Fuck You by Lily Allen. It's my favorite song to sing in karaoke. I love listening to Nicki Minaj when I'm angry. Like her rap songs, it's like I drive around in my car and I like scream like Nicki Minaj, like what's like, um, did it on them. Like, yeah, and it's super embarrassing. And yeah, but Nicki Minaj when I'm angry, it's a guilty pleasure. Oh, I'd l absolutely love to tour with Phoebe Bridges. I think I'd learn a lot. Um, she's an inspiration to me as it is. So yeah, I feel like touring with her and she just seems like a lovely person as well. Madison Square Gardens. I know that's a big one, but dream big. Billie Eilish, I feel like she has, she's so young and to have already done so much is so young. I definitely think she's had a really big influence on the music industry. What advice for my current self give to my, f okay, that's a tricky one. Um, I feel like to stop worrying so much. I'm a big worrier, I'm a very anxious person and I feel like I get wound up about things before they have even happened. So just to remember at the end of the day, you know, you're gonna enjoy it no matter what. So just stop worrying so much, Abby. I don't think there was a specific moment exactly, but every time I watch live music, it just, I know, I'm like, this is what I want to do. Like when I watch gigs, festivals, anything, I'm like, this is what I want to do. So yeah, it's anything, every time I watch live music, it reaffirms that that's what I want to do, be on stage and show the people my music and sing and perform. <laughs>